Hi, and today I'm answering the question, what is an electron volt? Well, an electron volt is in essence simply a unit of energy. But you say, I thought the joule was the unit for energy. Well, that's true. And in many circumstances, that's the appropriate unit to use. It is, of course, the standard SI unit for energy. But there are applications where that particular unit is not very useful. And so we will use the electron volt as the unit for energy. So today I'm gonna to look at what an electron volt is and how it relates to the unit called the joule. So stay tuned. Now before we go on, let's quickly review the whole nature of applying a force on an object to change its energy. In other words, we do work on it. Now what I have here is a ball and I raise its potential energy or its energy in terms of its position in terms of a gravitational field by simply lifting it up. And how do I determine the amount of energy I put into the system? Well, that's the work done. So let's quickly draw that up. And I'm going to obviously have a certain distance here that is going to be my height that I lifted up like so. So I'm raising, of course, this ball up to this position and I'm applying a force. And of course, the work I do on that is equal to the force multiplied by my displacement. And in this case, the force that I apply is equal to its weight multiplied by the height. And there we have our standard formula for potential energy, mgh. We're applying a force that goes against the gravitational field lines. So we're going to also label those in as well because the understanding of gravitational field lines is sometimes useful when understanding the whole nature of forces and energy. And of course, these lines represent what an object with mass will do or move in a gravitational field. In this case, it goes down. And of course, we're going against that. So that's why I have to do work. But now I'm going to flip it on its head. Let's say this is not a ball, but let's say this is an electron and the electron is placed between two charge plates. So I'm going to change colors here and I'm going to make this here is now my electron. And of course it has a charge of 1.6 by 10 to the negative 19 Coulomb. I'm going to lift it up, but I'm going to have to do work to lift it up in the same way that we did the terms of gravity. So that means this here will need to be a negatively charged plate and this here needs to be a positive charge plate. And in this case, the convention is that the electric field lines are going always from a positive to a negative. So in our case, these are the electric field lines. You'll notice now they go in the opposite direction like so. Of course, the electric field lines represent a force a positive charge will experience in that field. Now, lastly, we need to set up these plates and we do this by applying a voltage to it. And to do that, to make this positive and that negative, I apply a voltage that looks like this. And I'm going to make this one volt. What about the work? So the work done, of course, is equal to the force multiplied by my displacement. Now in this case, I'm just going to call this D. Okay, so it's the distance between my plates in this case. And I'm going to make this my D value. Now what's the force? Well, the force is based on the force due to the electric field. So since the electric field is the force per unit charge, that is electric field is equal to the force per unit charge like this, then we know that the force is equal to EQ. So now I have EQ multiplied by D. But what about the voltage? Well, the voltage is actually also setting up the electric field and the electric field is equal to the volts per distance. So if I rearrange that, my volts becomes ED and you'll see that ED is already in there. So I get work done is equal to VQ. Now that actually sets up also our understanding of what volts is. If I rearrange that and I'll just put it aside here, is that the voltage is equal to the work done per unit charge. That's a definition for voltage. So now what we can get is we can get the energy of my electron, my change in energy specifically, by simply multiplying the voltage multiplied by the charge. And so now if I want to work out the work done, it's simply the voltage multiplied by the charge. And we said it was equal to one volt. And we multiplied by the charges, which was 1.6 by 10 to the power of negative 19 Coulomb. And we get a grand total of 1.6 by 10 to the negative 19 joules. So that's the work done on a single charge 
in an electric field, which is set up by a one volt potential difference. As you can see, this number is extremely small. So if we're moving electrons in electric fields, then you're going to get only really small amounts of energy. And so we like to actually work with values that are, I guess, more common. We do the same thing, we measure distances, we measure things in meters, but we'll talk about kilometers and light years and astronomical units because it is easier to work with in those situations. We like meters in terms of SI units, but when we're measuring small distances, we might refer to nanometers, picometers, femtometers, and in some cases, we even refer to angstroms. Again, those aren't standard SI units, but they help us uh, handle the numbers better. And so in this case, what we do is we say, look, the energy that an electron receives when we move it, a potential difference of one volt, well, that's equal to one electron volt. So in this case, this value here becomes our equivalent for an electron volt. So one electron volt one electron, one fundamental charge, move the potential difference of one volt is equivalent to our 1.6 by 10 to the power of negative 19 joules. And that's your conversion. And that's why in many cases, particularly in nuclear physics and in particle physics, they refer to the energy in terms of electron volts and then even larger values by simply adding the kilo or the mega or the giga to that situation. It makes easier sense, but if you ever needed to convert it back into joules, there is your ratio. And you'll notice too that there's no distance in here. So the actual separation here isn't important because in fact, if you were to make these plates closer together, then you actually change the voltage in the process. In any case, I hope this helped you understand the nature of the electron volt and how to convert electron volts back to joules and the vice versa. My name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. Please like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if it's been helpful for you and stay tuned for my next videos. Take care, bye for now.